Hey there, everybody. Today, I want to share one of my favorite tips using Adobe Express Beta and Google Slides. Did you now know in the new Adobe Express Beta, you can actually import layered PDF, PSD, and AI files? Well, let's take a look at Google Slides and think about how we can use that to update or add a little bit of theming to pre-existing slides. So I have this sample deck here with five different slides, and you can see it has some design elements and whatnot, but what if I wanna bring these into Adobe Express to add a little more pizzazz to their design? Well, first off, I'm gonna to go to File, and I'm gonna go ahead and download these to a PDF document. Once I click that, after a few seconds, this is going to save to a PDF document. I'm gonna go back over to Adobe Express Beta, and on the home page, do start from your content. Here, I'm gonna to navigate to those slides and hit open. And what's gonna happen is Adobe Express is going to, to convert each of those pages, in this case, the five pages, to layered slides. Now, there'll be a little bit of touch up to do, but this is a great starting point because what will happen in a matter of a few seconds is it's going to provide me with a multi-page document in which I can create some slide templates. Now, I'm not gonna focus too much on text or typography. I just kinda wanna make a themed template here. So you can see I have a couple of uh, elements here that I may go ahead and delete. But as I click through here, I'm gonna go and delete some of this text and we can go ahead and add text in Google Slides. What we wanna do is just kind of focus on some of these elements. So what has happened behind the scenes? Well, if you look at the top, I now have five pages to play around with. And now we can kind of edit and update these to again include some more design elements. So one of the design elements I'm not a fan of is kind of this background here. So you can see the background just, you know, it's just this white kind of default Google slide background. I wanna go ahead and add more imagery to this. So I'm gonna start just by kind of going through and replacing some of these assets. So to do so, I can do this rather easily. I'm gonna go ahead and go to my media tab and I'm gonna do the photos. And here I'm gonna search for notebook paper. And so what's gonna happen is I'm gonna see a lot of different options for notebook paper. I kinda like this option right here, so I'm gonna hit okay. And then I'm gonna select that asset and give it a few seconds to load and make sure that it's going to replace my background page. Immediately now you can see that my elements are coming to life. Now, if I click in here, you'll notice I have this backdrop of a pen. That's pretty cool, but maybe I wanna also add an eraser. So let's go ahead and look at pink eraser. And sure enough, we have some options. I kinda like this one. I'm gonna put that in. Well, I have a white background. Easy as that, we'll let it load up onto our creative cloud. And then once the image loads in properly, and we're gonna just shrink it down while it's doing that, I'm gonna hit the Remove Background Tool. And through the magic of Adobe, we now have a eraser. So I'm gonna kind of just keep the scale appropriate to the pen. And maybe we'll move this and kind of rotate this just keep that shadow in the same place. So now we have a couple of background elements. We could add more icons to this, but let's say I'm done with this particular slide. I wanna go on to the next. Same thing, we can play with the uh, different typefaces a little later. So that's something I would most likely add where I can edit those in my PowerPoint, which I'll show you how to do. But you know, I'm looking at these and I'm not terribly impressed with things like these arrows. So if I double click, these arrows aren't really doing it for me. They don't really have a lot of um, personality or life to them. So let's go ahead and play a little bit with these arrows. In this case, I'm gonna add some elements, type the word arrows, and you can see I get a lot more dynamic arrows within my elements tab. And I could go through and I could search through design assets. I really like this arrow right here. So I'm gonna pull that in and 
just kind of cover up that little spot right there and maybe flip this just to kind of get a little bit more look to it. Actually, I liked it the other way. Here we go. Flip it back. Rotate it. Now you may be thinking, OK, well, what happened to the backdrop? Well, we're going to add that in a few seconds. But real quick, I'm going to hit Control or Command D. I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to flip this and put this arrow on the other side to kind of get me some extra looks here. Now, if you're going through your graphics and you know, you can see there's a lot of layers that have actually come in with this, you can go through and select all of these elements. So if you don't like a particular element, again, it's not too bad. If you keep clicking, eventually you can kind of highlight those different areas. Now, it could be a little hard to highlight depending on how it breaks it up on the import, but you know, couple clicks and you'll find that it's actually pretty easy to do. So how do I get that notebook paper background back in? Well, rather than going to re import that picture, I'm actually going to go to my background. So you can see this is my background slide here. I'm going to hit Control C, go over a page, Control V. And sure enough, I'm kind of importing this theme. I can even add things like shapes to make sure that my text have some background to them. I'm going to add a rectangle and I'm going to kind of put this in this slot, just make it a little bigger. As you can see, it's sharp, but now we have the ability to round corners. So again, I can kind of nudge that into place and maybe even change the color to something like a lighter blue. We can go into our color palette and play with the opacity just a little bit, just to add some emphasis to it. At any point, we can go and pull this below our elements. And again, I like to hold the Alt key down that duplicates things. And that allows me to just kind of duplicate and slide with my mouse. And same thing here, I'll pull this behind that one just so the black stands out. So now I have a really nice header. Let's go on to the next slide. OK, the next slide looks pretty cool, but I'm not a fan of this notebook. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that layer, go to media and type notebook. I could even type the word journal here. So I'm going to look and try to find an open notebook of my liking. I kind of like this one. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Once that loads, I'm going to go ahead and set paper to background. And now I have a dynamic look. So again, I can delete these. These are just kind of placeholder text for me. I could add text, but again, I'm going to show you how to import this into uh, back into Google Slides. All right, this final one needs some work. So I still have that background loaded. So I'm going to paste that in and I'm going to go in and delete the text here. So we don't need that text layer anymore. And I'm not a huge fan of this notebook. So let's see what we have option wise to kind of add to this. So we're going to go ahead and see if we can't replace this. So I'm going to ungroup these elements, delete them, go back down to elements and type notebook. And let's see what we get. So sometimes you won't find anything, but if you keep kind of cycling through eventually in this case, in icons, we'll find a nice notebook. So I kind of like this open notebook. Comes in, I'm not a huge fan of that blue. So we're going to scale this down just slightly to match that black color. Go to the fill, match the black color, and there we go. Again, if we want to add things like a pencil, we can do that. So maybe we want to replace this slide deck with a pencil all sorts of different options for pencils. This is a good one right here. Give it a few seconds to load into your Express. And we'll kind of have it off the page in this case. Hit remove background. And as simple as that, you now have a great pencil asset ready to go. So we're going to just make this just a little smaller and go from there. Now, at this point, what if I want to add some backdrops for text? So I kind of have these one liners here that I'm going to add back in when we pull this back into 
uh, the, the Google document, but I'm gonna go ahead back to elements and get my good old background shapes and use my freeform square. And I'm gonna just essentially create little highlights and I'll keep them rather long just so we have some room to enter some text. And then I'm gonna hold my Alt key and click and drag and that's gonna allow me to kind of keep these uniform. Again, hold Alt, grab them all. That pencil, we want to move on top, so we'll grab that pencil and drag it to the very top of our layer stack, just so it's touching. And then at this point, the really cool thing is we can kind of use our grouping function here and then turn down the opacity just slightly to all of those. So now we kind of have little areas we can shoot for. The final slide has some clouds, and this is just my placeholder image. Uh, of course, I can look for clouds, sketch, and if you can't find specific assets, you're probably not <laughs> searching hard enough because absolutely anything can seemingly be found in Adobe Express Beta. I love this cloud right here, for instance. I'm gonna lower it down, kind of move it into place, just to kind of have some fun with it. If you're not a fan of that actual color, you can go to effects, make it grayscale, and it will kind of match the rest. So again, we can continue to add to these. If I want, I can go back and copy that paper that we had. So if I go back to this paper slide, hit Control C, go in here, Control V, we now have a lovely template. Maybe we wanna add finally some colored pencils. Thank you. And we're gonna add some colored pencils in here. And we don't want a ton of them, but I kind of like this one in the corner. So let's see what the background removal tool will do with this. Kind of line it up. That shadow may be a little difficult, so we'll let it load for a few seconds and see what it gives us. And hit remove background. And sure enough, it actually did pretty decently on these. So we'll just kind of have those floating around in our corner, looking good, maybe even make them just a little smaller. All right, now that we have our slides where we want them, if we go back to multi-page, you'll see we really transform these templates. Well, now I wanna get these out of Adobe Express. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit download and I'm gonna download all my pages. And I wanna download each of these uh, as either PNGs or JPEGs. So I'm gonna just pick JPEG here. And what this is going to do is zip the files up. Now, a zip file is just basically a folder of compressed files that you can open. And you can see I have quite a bit of them ready to go. I can now get these back to my Google Slideshow. Now, to get these into a slideshow, I can now go to my view theme builder. And now that I have these in theme builder, I can go ahead and start creating my own slides. So for instance, if I want to have a slide that has a background image, I could do background, choose image, and we could simply go browse, go to our slides. And sure enough, that first slide's going to come in. And it's ready to go. And we'll kind of go down the options here. So we will add one here, background, choose image, just to show you a few of these that you can kind of add through. So we'll add this nice dual template here. Again, I mentioned you can add text. So I could add text boxes here. I could use my theme builder to continue to add, again, different text boxes throughout. So if I want to add, again, uh, body text placeholders, for instance, I could simply drag those and I'd have bullet points as well, which is nice. I can hold my alt key to duplicate that. There we go. And what's happening behind the scenes is as soon as I click away from this, if I want to start creating new slides, they're going to be now in my template. So now I can easily add to this. I could say fact number one, fact number two. And again, I could build on to this as I go. If I want that new title slide, don't worry, I could just go to the top and add 21st century skills organization. Awesome. And then obviously you have the choice of all of your different typefaces here 
in your Google Slides. So this is a great way to integrate the creativity of Adobe Express Beta along with the functionality of Google Slides. You could do this in PowerPoint. They have a master slide deck builder as well within that, and you can create some really dynamic custom slideshows. Hope you enjoyed this lesson and look forward to seeing what you create.